Hello, and thank you for listening to me today from filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. And uh, today I'm going to talk about um, my ideal mobile device, uh, phones or tablets. Uh, one of the biggest problems, in my opinion, when it comes to mobile devices is how locked down uh, the bootloader is. Basically, a lot of these devices are running Android, which if you have root access on, you can load up uh, you know, a copy of Debian or anything on it, and just uh, any Linux distribution, and use all the packages and software that are available for that distribution, as long as they you know support your architecture, which I use Debian, which supports pretty much every architecture that's commonly used out there. So if I have root access on an Android device, I can now uh, load Debian uh, with a few you know commands and install any program uh, from the repositories. Obviously, getting uh, GUI applications running uh, take a little bit of work. Not a whole lot. I mean, it can be done, but it's gonna need some sort of virtualization or some display management with VNC or whatever, however you end up doing it. But uh, most of the things I run uh, that are more advanced things that wouldn't be on Android already would be done in the shell anyway. Um, but again, uh, one of the, and if you have an unlocked bootloader, rooting your device is usually pretty easy. Um, but so many of them are all locked down. Sometimes like I've owned a few different, uh, in the last, you know, so many years, I've owned at least two Motorola phones. And one of the things I love about them is Motorola lets you unlock the bootloader. And it's very simple to add in your own little, you know, recovery partition and change stuff. Uh, but you can still screw that stuff up. So what would I see as a ideal uh, device, whether it be a tablet, a phone, or even like a media device for your TV? And this is what I envision. Okay, maybe it comes with a full operating system like Android or something similar like that on it, but you would have a button uh, that you could be able to hold down when you reboot, whether it's like a little pinhole button. And when you do that, it brings it into a bootloader that is hard coded onto a chip that can't be erased. So there's no way you can screw it up. Uh, similar to, to like the BIOS, or wherever they call them nowadays, the, the, the BIOS on a desktop machine, which you can mess up, you can erase, and you can update. But for the most part, a desktop computer, you can't, you're not gonna wipe out your machine and make it and brick it to the point where you can't boot a new operating system on it unless you're upgrading that firmware, which very few people do. And if you do, you know what you're doing. But something like that, so, so it's like on a chip that's separate from the other uh, storage media. And all this is, is very small. It could be probably, you know, under 32 megabytes with ease. Because if you think about Linux distributions, such as like um, uh, uh, Slitaz, uh, which I'm probably still mispronouncing after all these years that I love, it has a full desktop environment and web browser and services such as SSH and stuff already installed. And, you know, Xorg running on a, about a 30 megabyte uh, image, compressed image. Uh, so you wouldn't re need more than that for this bootloader. And what I would envision that bootloader is that bootloader either will boot when you hold in that, that, that button on the back of the device, or if for some reason the main partition on your storage doesn't boot, it will default to this. And what that will do is just be a lightweight version of Linux with just a menu that has options to connect to the network, whether it be through Wi-Fi or automatically connect to Ethernet. And then it will say install, and it will do some sort of, uh, um, the bootstrap, which if you're not familiar with the bootstrap is, it's a program that you can run on Linux on uh, Debian based distributions. Uh, and you can point it to a server that will pull down, uh, basically it's like doing a net install. So basically it would have an option to do a default install where it will go out to whatever servers are set up for that device and pull them down. And then, so if you wipe, accidentally wipe out your system or corrupt it, you can get into this bootloader, connect it to your network, say install, and it will pull down those files. And it could be the, the newest version of those files. But beyond that, because let's say years from now, that company doesn't support that device anymore and the servers go down, uh, just have a text field where you can type in your own server and it will pull down the things from there. So for example, you can use the Debian servers and it will pull down uh, you know, a Debian install. And that's it. It's just having that functionality would be amazing because it would be pretty much impossible to screw up your device. No matter how bad you do, you press the little pin button on the back and hit enter, you know, type in your Wi-Fi password and hit enter a couple times and we'll download the, the, the install that's designed for that device. And it can be your media center or whatever that device or, or phone OS, whatever it's designed for that device. But if you didn't like that, you could point it to another server that's set up somewhere that you set up locally on your network. Or if someone designs, someone else designs one, you can point it and it can pull it down. And you know, if you don't like that, press in that little pin button, reboot and go through the process again with a different server. 
And to me, that is the biggest drawback to mobile devices and these little media devices is how hard they, and they do it on purpose. They do it on purpose so that after two years or however many years they, they discontinue updates. So now you don't get updates anymore. So you have to, you know, go through the unlocking the, of the bootloader and, and uh, hoping that the community has created updates for it. Um, where this, it's like the day you get it. If you want to try a different OS, you can go through that and, and it pulls it down and runs it. And maybe some of these servers will actually go through the process of dual booting or quad booting your system or tri booting, uh, you know, to where it, it pulls down the, the file system and then runs an install script that might install different boot options for you. But at any point you can, since that chip, it, it, there's really no need to upgrade it. I mean, theoretically there can be a security flaw, but it's highly unlikely uh, in my opinion. Uh, but that chip, and, and I guess you could say it to where you could flash the firmware if you wanted on that chip. But just how great would that be? The, the fear of accidentally breaking your device beyond repair would be completely gone. And obviously this would be bad for companies that make the devices because they're not forcing you to upgrade them. But you know what? Desktop developers, de desktop companies have had it like this basically for years. I mean, not that convenient to where it does a net install for you, but you could put in a bootable device that does that. Uh, but to have that little chip, you know, 32 megabytes of storage for that little loader that boots up a minimal version of Linux, network drivers, and then you can point it at a server to install your OS would just be awesome. And maybe it would even uh, have an option to where the default, you know, the, the, the official release for that device uh, maybe has different versions. And maybe instead of just pointing to one, maybe they'll have a list menu where you can choose one from the list. Uh, think like, like let's say compare this to like a de well let's say you're doing this on on a, a tablet and you want to install it, it has Ubuntu and then you can have and I'm not promoting Ubuntu I'm just using it as an example you can have you know an option for XFCE uh, GNOME KDE you know in the menu and it'll pull down whichever one you want how awesome would that be uh, I think desktop should be like this too uh, but sadly we're, we're going the opposite direction with devices again they're all locked down. Um, you know, some things like Chromebooks, which are basically laptops, they, they have locked, but it's very easy to unlock the bootloader and boot your own, you know, OS from, from a USB or SD card. Uh, so, so, you know, Chrome devices seem to be a lot more open and more like a, a real device than an Android device. But again, if you get an Android device that you can unlock the bootloader, it's easy to get root, and now you can run whatever Linux distribution you want, in at least in the shell through Android. Uh, you know, obviously, getting a device to just boot, you know, Debian out of the box and have everything work is highly unlikely. And I think it's a lot of that's due to proprietary drivers, but also from what I hear the ARM architecture, which a lot of these devices are running is, is very sporadic because not one company makes ARM uh, processors, but they license it out to other companies. So there's a lot of different standards, I guess you would say. Uh, but again, uh, to just have, and, and again, they'll, they'll, they'll advertise this as security, uh, which I see some aspects of that. Uh, you look at like a desktop computer, I can walk up to most desktop computers, plug in a flash drive or drop in a CD if they still have a CD-ROM drive, boot Linux, and have full access to, the, to the, the Windows hard drive on that machine, which is a security issue, especially with mobile devices, you're carrying them around a lot more. Simple solution to that, encryption, encrypt your hard drive. And a lot of these devices by default, if you unlock the bootloader, it automatically wipes your your device, which uh, you can, um, once you unlock the bootloader, that's not a problem anymore. So it's up to you. I can understand the device coming with a locked bootloader, but make it easy for you to unlock it with a press of a button. And if you want to have by default wipe the partition, you obviously don't want to do that all the time because with a desktop computer, let's say you screw up your, your system, you want to be able to boot another operating system to get into it to maybe fix your system without having to do a full install, maybe recover your files. So booting a different operating system is vital with computer usage and they've kind of removed that from Linux or Android devices on a lot of cases, at least by default. Once you have the bootloader un unlocked, uh, it's easy to, you know, flash over other images, backup images, which is to me more important than, than the security of someone getting my device. If I really, really am concerned about that, I'll encrypt my partition uh, with a security key. Um, some people might disagree with me on that. Like 
when it comes to desktop computers, uh, and they they the whole thing uh, with Secure Boot with Windows, and now they're, I guess they're doing something with Apple. I haven't really read up on it. It's kind of the same thing. Either case, whether it's Secure Boot or whatever Apple's calling their trusted ID or whatever they call it, you can go into the BIOS and disable that. You know, a lot, a lot of articles are going around now saying, oh, new Apple computers, you can't boot Linux. Yes, you can. From what I've read, you just disable their, their crapware that they've put on there. But it's all about making things more difficult for the end user, but promoting it as security. And a lot of people might disagree with me. A lot of people might be like, oh, secure boot's so important. It's, it makes things more secure. Yeah, sure, if you say so. The fact that you can go into the BIOS and disable it uh, with a few clicks uh, makes me think otherwise. Um, and I get it's supposed to prevent software from making those changes, but your operating system should do that. Your operating system shouldn't let rogue software be modifying your bootloader, and you shouldn't be letting crazy random software running on your machines. So it all comes back to, you know, my feelings on, uh, like, uh, antivirus software. I think it's complete crap and an, an illusion. Just don't install viruses on your machine. Get your software from trusted places that's created by trusted people, and that's not an issue. Now, there's so many operating systems out there where people go and randomly download files from random websites. That's kind of the standard on Windows, I believe on Apple as well. And I see, sadly, a lot of people do it on Linux too. Stick with your default repositories unless uh, you really, really know and trust these other locations. But for most users, just use your default repositories. Everything you need should be in there. Anyway, that's a whole nother note. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, what do you think about my idea of having a bootloader that's a mini Linux distribution on a chip on a device that boots, loads up your network drivers, and then can pull down uh, your operating system from whatever server you give it? That's a lot better than, you know, a lot of Android devices have a separate partition, which, you know, uh, holds your install. Basically, if you refresh your 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 system, well, a lot of times your system uh, partition is read only. And if that gets screwed up, you're kind of messed up <laughs> unless you have a backup of it. Uh, but then when you pull down updates, it actually puts all that uh, in an image and images it over. Wouldn't it be great if it could just do a, the bootstrap? It's an awesome way to, that's how I do all my installs for all my desktops. It'd be awesome if devices could do that with a few clicks. Anyway, thanks for listening and I hope that you have a great day.